every archaeologist loves making a discovery. But sometimes they wish those discoveries came with an instruction manual, or at least a few clues that might explain their purpose. Even the most experienced and qualified archaeologists and experts in the world find themselves stumped by the things they find every now and then, and when they can't find answers, other people try to fill in the blanks. We've packed this video full of the most mysterious archaeological finds of our times and the strange stories behind them. Regardless of how you feel about the level of threat presented by climate change, you probably believe that fear of the changing climate is a modern phenomenon. In fact, it could date back more than 1,000 years if some of the theories about the mysterious Viking rock runstone are correct. Built close to Sweden's Lake Vatern during the 9th century, the stone is covered in etchings and runes that experts have been trying to uncover the secrets of for years. More than 700 runes cover every side of the monument, making it the world's longest known runic inscription. For many years, it was believed to be a memorial to a great battle, but an alternative interpretation of the runes transcribed by a partnership of Swedish universities suggests a pronounced fear of extreme winters and cold summers. The stone could even be the origin of the Viking Ragnarok myth. The Vikings of the time would have had reason to fear the climate. A chain of volcanic eruptions in 536 CE had lowered the global temperature, triggering failing crops and mass starvation. Much is known about the historical site of Arkham, an ancient fortified settlement in the southern Urals. But almost nothing is known about its potential twin settlement, Alad. Most people don't even know that it's there at all. The site sits on the border of Orenburg and Chelyabinsk and has never been fully explored. A series of exploratory digs and surveys were once planned for the late 1990s, but were suspended because of a lack of funding and then cancelled. It's high time someone went to take a closer look at it because some archaeologists believe it's 500 years older than Arkham and may contain even bigger ancient secrets than its twin. The remains of a stone wall can be seen clearly marking the perimeter of the site. Considering they've been there for around a thousand years, their current state of dilapidation is understandable. There's some evidence that there was a moat beyond the wall, and so whatever was at the center of the settlement was heavily defended. Someone went to a lot of trouble to defend whatever was at the heart of Aland, so the least we could do is go and see what they were protecting. You may have seen this monkey sculpture before without ever pausing to think about how it was made or why. It's on display at the National Anthropology Museum in Mexico and comes from the Aztec site of Texcoco. There's no doubt it's a beautiful work of art, but why would the ancient Aztecs choose to make sculptures out of a material that was so difficult to work with? In truth, the art of working with the hard yet delicate rock predates the Aztecs going back some 2,500 years to the time of the Olmec. The pieces would be carefully carved with knives and then polished with sand to give them a surface shine. The monkey is still shiny today, hundreds of years after it was created. We know that making the monkey would be difficult and we probably don't understand 100% of the method, but we understand even less about its purpose. We can speculate that they were only made for members of the ruling elite, and the best guess of archaeologists was that they were used in funeral rites. But then again, that tends to be the best guess of archaeologists for just about everything they don't understand. An archaeological discovery doesn't have to be ancient in order to be interesting. Archaeology covers the find of anything historically interesting buried in the earth, even if that history is very recent. In 2003, U.S. forces in Iraq were exploring the Al Takadam airfield close to Baghdad in hopes of finding weapons of mass destruction. They didn't find any, but they did find several combat planes, including Su-25 Frog Food Fighters and MiG-25 Foxbat fighters of Soviet design. The wings of the plane had been removed and they'd been deliberately buried in the sand in a way that would allow them to be made serviceable again once they were uncovered. It's thought that the burying of the planes was a gamble by Saddam Hussein. 
He knew the old planes would stand no chance in the air against more advanced American and Allied fighters, but if he survived the war, they could still be useful against enemies closer to home. Instead of risking flying them into battle, he buried them in the hope that they could be protected. As only 12 desert planes have been found so far, it's thought that far more are still out there, hidden in the sand. Sometimes the discovery doesn't sit well with the established narrative of history. Whenever that happens, scientists try to explain the discrepancy away quickly in the hope that nobody will ask any further questions. That's why this find from the Kamchatka Peninsula from 2013 was written off as an ancient fossil when it actually appears to look a lot like a system of mechanized gears. If it is, then history as we know it would be changed forever. These gears are more than 400 million years old. The discovery was made when hikers were traveling through the area and found the unusual design embedded in rocks. Knowing they'd spotted something potentially significant, they contacted archaeologist Yuri Golubev, who set out to take a closer look himself. What he found there was unlike anything he'd seen before in his life. In his own words, the fossilized cylinders contained metal parts that couldn't be explained, and the teeth around the edges suggested that the cylinders once combined together to make a larger machine. Is this an out-of-place artifact or a bizarre natural formation? We cannot say. The first discoveries of strange spiral-shaped rock formations in the state of Nebraska, USA were recorded during the mid-19th century. But nobody paid much attention to them until 1891 when geologist Dr. E. H. Barber was asked to inspect a nine-foot-long example of the phenomenon with his own eyes. As a geologist, he was baffled by its composition. The center of the tube was filled with sand, and the walls were made of a white material he couldn't identify. As he didn't have any better ideas, he officially named the structures Damon Alex, which was taken from the name that local ranchers had already given them. The ranchers called them Devil's Corkscrews. Barber eventually took the step of cutting some of the corkscrews open and found rodent bones inside them, which confused him further. Today, the official explanation is that these are the burrows of a now-extinct relative of the beaver known as the Peleocaster, which lived and died 22 million years ago, and that digging them in spiral shapes defended them from predators. It's an interesting theory, but lacks solid evidence. How much the human race has known about the moon, and how long we've possessed that level of knowledge, is a subject of ongoing scientific debate. There's certainly an awful lot we didn't know until Neil Armstrong touched down on its surface in 1969, and detailed mapping of the moon has only been possible thanks to the advanced telescopes of the last hundred years or so. Or has it? This is John Russell's Selenographia, a model of the lunar sphere completed in 1797. Russell spent 30 years of his life perfecting the design, which was largely made out of paper mache and plaster. Only one side of the moon has details on it for obvious reasons, but the accuracy of the details is incredible for someone working with the equipment of the time. The moon's craters and mountains are all accurately depicted, as are the areas where the people of our planet once mistook for seas. There are features on Russell's sphere which weren't officially identified and named until decades later. A second accompanying sphere represents the Earth, but is much more simple in design and represents Tasmania as a peninsula. In other words, Russell's moon is more accurate than his Earth. The only thing we can say with any certainty about Ohio's Great Serpent Mound is that it's in Peebles and it's the world's largest earthwork effigy with a total length of 1,330 feet. Anything beyond that is speculation and educated guesswork. The most widely believed of those educated guesses is that the Adena people built the three-foot-high serpent, but that seems to clash with the scientific evidence. The Adena lived on these lands 3,000 years ago, but disappeared just over 2,000 years ago. Samples of charcoal taken from the mound suggest that it's only 1,000 years old. That was the time when the Fort Ancient Civilization lived here, but they didn't make anything else like this that we're aware of. 
Researchers and experts can't even agree on what the serpent is supposed to represent. Some of them believe that it's in the process of swallowing an egg and may have fertility implications, whereas others say the sphere close to its mouth represents the moon. We generally credit the ancient Romans with the creation of aqueducts. Even the word aqueduct is Roman in origin. We might have been giving that mighty civilization a little too much credit, though. There's some evidence that the first aqueducts may have been the work of the Nazca people. The ancient Peruvian civilization is already known as the creator of the mysterious Nazca lines, but the other great monuments they've left us with are the Pukios, a network of reservoirs, channels, and holes in the earth that allowed water to flow from where it fell and gathered to where it was needed. Often the Pukios ran on for miles under and across the desert, making them a monumental feat of engineering that would be considered challenging even by today's standards. The intelligent design of the Pukios meant that not only could the Nazca people keep their crops watered during the prolonged droughts that often occurred on their land, but they also had a permanent supply of drinking water. Because of that, they were able to survive while many of the civilizations and cultures around them perished. In Golan, there's a prehistoric stone puzzle that some people believe is older than the pyramids and might even be an ancient star calendar. This is the puzzling site of Rejum el Heri, sometimes more poetically referred to as the Wheel of the Gods. The site defies all attempts to date it accurately or to decode its meaning, so the imaginations of both the informed and uninformed have run wild about what it represents. We can all agree on the material matter of what's there. Five precisely arranged circles of basalt rock at the heart of which is a carn that was almost certainly a tomb before it was robbed centuries ago. The rings are 8 feet tall, with the stack at their center being closer to 15 feet. A lack of organic content means that precise dating is impossible, and yet somehow scientists have decided it's 5,000 years old. Like Stonehenge in England, we'll probably never truly understand who built it, why they built it, and what they used it for. The generally accepted scientific and archaeological explanation for Klerksdorp spheres is that they're nothing more than naturally occurring concretions laid down as sediments and then fashioned into their distinctive shape by millions of years of weathering and exposure to the elements. That could be true, but it wouldn't explain why they're almost exclusively found in South African mines and why some of them appear to contain traces of metal that couldn't possibly have got there through concretion. Many of the Klerksdorp spheres are the same size, shape, and color as a cricket ball, right down to having seams running through the center. That's a remarkable design for something that's occurred naturally, and apparently, Mother Nature also thought to apply a layer of polish to their surface as well. There's no doubt that concretion is a real phenomenon and explains a lot of mysterious spherical rocks all over the world. But many people feel that the Klerksdorp spheres are too specific in design to have been made that way. Where do you suppose the art of bridge building as we know it today began? Ancient Rome, perhaps? Ancient Egypt? Even earlier than that? How about the land that we now call Iraq? Somewhere in the region of 5,000 years ago. That's the site of the ancient Sumerian city of Girsu, and the bridge that they built over the waterway that once existed here. Archaeologists have known about the bridge since the 1920s, but originally thought it was either the remains of a dam or the foundations of an old temple. Only more recently has a closer examination of stone and clay tablets found in the area revealed references to the bridge, prompting experts to look at the site of the dam again. This time, they realized what it truly was. Seemingly created one baked brick at a time, this is the oldest known bridge in the world because the site had previously been thought of as comparatively unimportant, it was left to rot after its initial discovery. And so being exposed to the elements for a century has taken its toll on what's there. A concentrated preservation effort is now underway at the site. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.
and see you in the next video.